the Linux kernel is absolutely no stranger to wild stories, and today's topic is one such story. Now, a modern Linux system revolves around a handful of file systems. Most users are running ext4. If you have a really old system with a really old drive, maybe it's still running ext3. Sometimes you'll see a system running ZFS, and a lot of modern distros make use of ButterFS. But in standard Linux fashion, these are not the only supported file systems. You've probably made use of FAT32 if you've ever plugged in a thumb drive. But there is so many others, most of which you'll probably never touch. One of those being RiserFS. Now, RiserFS isn't some new file system just being introduced that's supposed to be better than ButterFS or faster than ext4 or anything like that. This has been in the kernel since 2001 with the 2.4.1 kernel, and at this stage is slated for deletion in 2025. But why are we discussing it now? Obviously, there's the historical context behind it and all that, and that's all fun, but there's a bit more to it. So recently, Frederick R. Brennan sent a letter to the original creator. He was allowed to release the reply publicly, and recently released a transcribed version online. This is very long, we are not going to read all of it, but I will show you this a little bit later. The important thing though, is this letter was received from the creator, who back in 2006 was convicted for murdering his wife. But for now though, let's get into the history of the file system. So RiserFS was licensed under the GPL v2 license, which especially back in the late 90s and early 2000s just made a lot of sense to do. It was a fairly popular license back then, and considering that the Linux kernel is licensed in the same way, it was just a sensible fit. Now, a few years after it got merged into the kernel, in 2004, the majority of the development was done by a company known as Namesys. Now, this is a company that was founded by the original author of RiserFS, Hans Reiser. So that should make where the name came from really obvious. And like many things in the FOSS world, it was originally started by an individual other people got interested, eventually enough people were interested that it made its way into the kernel. But eventually, it made sense to have a more formal entity that was managing its development. This company was based out of Oakland, California, but also had developers that operated in Russia. Now, besides just developing the file system, they also provided support for other Linux systems and just general IT tech support stuff as a way to fund the development. Plus, when it comes to dealing with corporate sponsors, it just makes sense to also have a corporate entity where all of that stuff can be managed. And yes, there were a couple of companies that were working with them. This is their website from back in 2001. It is a very 2001 website. Now, a couple of years later, they also had another sponsor, that being SUSE. Now, this is the period where the Namesis website operated under the Namesis company. You might notice this big period right here. So in 2007, the website went completely dark. I'll get into that in just a bit. But at some point, somebody purchased the domain and it has hosted various things over the years. Right here, we have the Linux kernel archive. If we go right here, let's see what is on this one. Here we have some random Linux related blog. Here we still have the exact same blog with no new post, even though we are multiple years later. And various other things have been present on this website. Clearly someone in the Linux space owns the domain and is just doing whatever they want with it. Now, originally, Hans did plan to sell the names of his company to pay for his legal defense. But after he was convicted, the company did not last that much longer. In 2007, the website went completely offline, and then by 2010, the company was marked as suspended, and basically just been gone since then. Before this happened, things were actually looking pretty good for the file system. Now, I mentioned before that SUSE was sponsoring the project, or to be more specific, Novell, who at the time owned SUSE. But they weren't just doing so out of the goodness of their heart. They weren't just trying to make this file system better just to have a better option on Linux. The reason why they sponsored them is because SUSE defaulted to RiserFS at the time. That was until 
2006 when they swapped over to EXT3. Now, Jeff Mahoney of SUSE did comment on the matter at the time. I've seen a number of questions and misconceptions in some of the posts above, so I'll try to address a few of them. The headline is a bit misleading. My quoted email was a proposal, not an announcement. I wanted to gauge how well a change would be viewed by the community before we made any changes. The proposal was well received, but will probably be waiting until OpenSUSE 10.3 before we change the default file system. This proposal has absolutely nothing to do with Hans, the frictions we've had in the past, or his current legal troubles. Despite the impression that some of our more visible email exchanges may have given, we've actually had a decent working relationship. In fact, I posted this email several hours before the article reference in comment number 15 was pointed out to me for the first time, and I was concerned that people would make a connection when none existed. To repeat, the timing is entirely coincidental, and the motivation is unrelated. Look, this is 17 years ago, maybe it was unrelated, but considering how close this was to the whole matter of, you know, Hans murdering his wife, it's pretty clear to see why people made the connection. Now, at the time, there were actually two different versions of RiseRFS. The first one being RiseRFS, this is the one that actually made its way into the Linux kernel. I believe nowadays is on its 3.6.27 version. Maybe it's a little bit newer since then, but it's still on its 3.6 branch. The other version was also being worked on at the time. I believe it was first released back in 2002 and then kept being worked on from there. That being Riser 4. This once again had some pretty big sponsors. At the time, DARPA. Yes that DARPA, and also the commercial Linux distro, Linspire. This was started whilst Hans was still involved in the project, but after the conviction was spearheaded by another developer called Edward Shishkin, and he really believed in Riser 4. He thought this was going to be a really big file system that, you know, people are actually going to want to use, and back in 2010, he actually did try to get this merged into the Linux kernel. That didn't actually happen though, and until 2019 was still being developed for use with modern kernels. So if you wanted to load it in as an outer tree thing, you could go and do so, but it never made its way officially into the Linux kernel. And then after that, he announced another version of Riser, this being Riser 5. And I believe to this day, he is still developing it. But once again, it is still not in the Linux kernel. Now, for the time, RiserFS did actually perform quite well, at least back when it was first added. Back then, with a feature known as tail picking enabled, it actually performed on smaller files better than both ext2 and ext3. But it did have some interesting design issues. So prior to the 2.6.33 kernel, it made use of a thing called a big kernel lock, which basically means that core parts of the code were single threaded. So with these newfangled multi-core CPUs that were coming out, it didn't perform better and in many cases perform slower because oftentimes these CPUs were clocked lower. Now, due to the loss of its creator, there just not being a general interest in maintaining it, people like Edward Shishkin, who probably could maintain it, working on a whole different file system that is a newer version of Riser, it wasn't that well maintained. So come the 5.18 kernel in 2022, it was first marked as deprecated. And then the 6.6 .6 kernel in 2023, it was moved from deprecated to obsolete. And when something is marked as obsolete, basically that means it is going to be removed from the kernel. And at this stage, that is going to be in 2025. But at this stage, I have serious doubts that anybody is actually using it. And if you do have a really old system that is using RiserFS, please go and change it out to basically anything else. Now, due to this lack of maintenance and a big reason why it's being removed is the supported date range, December 14th. 1901 to January 18th, 2038. 32 bit Unix time, also known 
as the 2038 problem. So come 2038, basically Unix time is going to overflow on a 32-bit system. You cannot keep using this after that point without doing some funky workarounds like moving where the start of Unix time is, which is a terrible idea, and it's much better to just use 64-bit Unix time. Now, as for these letters, Brennan contacted Hans in regards to RiserFS being deprecated and slated for removal to, you know, find out his opinion on the matter and see what he thinks about it, see what he thinks about maybe how RiserFS could have been improved over the years, and just generally see what's been going on after 17 years in prison. Greetings, LKML. What follows is a letter from Hans Reiser to myself, which he wrote some two months back, and has asked me to publish, with his thought on the deprecation of RiserFS from the Linux kernel. I've transcribed it to the best of my ability, plain text email may not be the best way to read it, as such, I have also made available PDF and HTML versions of the letter. These can be found over here, I will leave the email along with this linked in the description down below. I was asked by a kind Frederick Brennan for my comments that I might offer on the discussion of removing RiserFS v3 from the kernel. I don't post directly because I'm in prison for killing my wife Nina in 2006. I am very sorry for my crime. A proper apology would be off topic for this forum, but available to any who ask. A detailed apology for how I interact with the Linux kernel community and some history of v3 and v4 are included, along with descriptions of what the technical issues were. I have been attending prison workshops and working hard on improving my social skills to aid my becoming less of a danger to society. The man I am now would do things very differently from how I did things then. Perhaps some might accept my apology, others might learn from my mistakes if I described them well, some might find the design issues interesting. I will leave it to the user to decide whether RiserFS v3 is still useful. Users should understand that it is a burden for those who maintain VFS and the like to have to test the changes on an additional file system, especially given Linux file systems are hard code at the VFS layer. Riser 4 provides a more maintainable basis for the future for those who like the features of v3. If v3 isn't used, it should go. I trust the users and the kernel maintainers to discuss whether it is used, and to make the right decision together. Assuming that the decision is to remove v3 from the kernel, I have just one request, that for one last release, the read may be edited to add Mikhail Gilula, Konstantin Shavako, and Anatoly Pinchuk, I probably completely butchered that, to the credits, and to delete anything in there that I might have said about why they were not credited. It is time to let go. In prison, I've been working quite hard on developing my social skills, especially my conflict resolution and my conflict avoidance skills. There is a lot of conflict in prison, as you can imagine, and it is quite a good place to learn those skills. Nothing like lots of practice and the groups that let's take if we want to have a quite well-developed curriculum. Repetition helps, at least for me. It has changed me. I had a tendency to see people in extremes, that I'm working on by being mindful of it, and by being around people who it would be easy to see in extremes. Many of them have become very good persons since their crimes. One of my dreams is to someday convince the state legislature to teach the curriculum to teach us prisoners in elementary school, so that people like me can learn it better without having to go to prison to learn it. I'm trying to convince some people to pitch it to legislators. If anyone would like to help with that, please let me know. It will help with more than just avoiding prison, it will help with all relationship conflicts, and who doesn't have those? The prison parenting class should also be taught in high school too. I don't know what Riser 5 is, I haven't been told, and I can't go on the internet. Edward Shishkin is a very bright man though, and one of my regrets is that I didn't spend more time with him. I'm confident he has done something nice in Riser 5. Who knows, maybe he has done some nice plugins that I never would have imagined. The compression plugin Edward coded was the one thing yielding the biggest performance boost of all things we did in Riser 4. Chances are high that I won't be released anytime soon. I encourage people to allow those who work so hard to build a beautiful file system for the users to escape the effects of my reputation. I invite you to empathise with what this has been like for them for a minute. Let their dreams escape from what I have done if that feels right to you. I wish I had learned the things I've been learning in prison about talking through problems and believing I can talk through problems and doing it before I had married or joined the LKML. 
I hope that day when they teach you things in elementary school comes. I thank Richard Stallman for his inspiration, software, and great sacrifices. It has been an honor to be of even passing value to the users of Linux. I wish all of you well. And if you'd like to read the rest of this for yourself, I'll leave it linked in the description down below, both the email and the image version as well. Now, I'm not here to lay judgment on him again. The courts did that 17 years ago and clearly found him guilty. At this stage, this is just a really weird part of the early Linux history, and I wanted more people to know about it. So, let me know down below. Did you know about this story? Have you ever used RiseFS yourself? Were you in the Linux space back when this happened? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, and verify link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Don't kill people. That's bad.